Supersonic travel is making a comeback. After Concorde's fall, many believed fast commercial flight was gone for good. But now a new aircraft claims to succeed where Concorde struggled. It promises lower noise, better fuel efficiency, and a longer range, solving the very problems that grounded its famous predecessor. Concorde was iconic, but it was loud, expensive, and limited in reach. This new jet aims to rewrite those rules and take aviation into the future. But can it really deliver on that promise? Or is supersonic flight still chasing a dream? Join us as we explore the capabilities of the Concorde successor that has finally reached hypersonic speed. The journey of supersonic commercial travel began in the 1950s, when Britain started thinking about the possibility of building a very fast passenger plane, one that has the ability to fly faster than the speed of sound. The idea was extremely alluring that France also showed interest. To make this dream a reality, Britain and France started acting out their plans. On the 29th of November, 1962, Britain and France signed an agreement to work together on this exciting project. They decided to share everything, including ideas, designs, money, and factories. The project was named Concorde, which means agreement in French. The name came from French President Charles de Gaulle, who used the word during a speech. The first Concorde ever built was called 001, and it flew for the first time on the 2nd of March, 1969, in Toulouse, France. The French test pilot was proud and happy when the plane landed safely. He smiled and said, the big bird flies. A few weeks later, the British version of the plane, called 001, had its first flight from an airfield in Bristol, England. People were amazed. That same year, both planes were shown at the Paris Air Show in June, and they became the stars of the event. One of the most famous Concords, called GBOAA, is now on display at the National Museum of Flight. It shows just how amazing this plane was. This aircraft performed exceptionally well. On 26 September 1973, Concorde made her first non-stop flight across the Atlantic Ocean. She flew from Washington, D.C. in the USA to Orly Airport near Paris, France. The trip took only three hours and 33 minutes, which was a new record at that time. The plane flew at an average speed of 954 miles per hour, which was faster than the speed of sound. Then they pressed on and the Concorde started flying with passengers on 21st January 1976. One plane took off from London and flew to Bahrain in the Middle East. Another Concorde, flown by Air France, flew from Paris to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. These flights were very special because Concorde could fly much faster than regular planes. People who wanted to save time and travel in style were excited to fly on Concorde, even though the tickets were very expensive. One of the most memorable moments in Concorde's history happened on the 1st of July, 1999. That was the day when the Scottish Parliament was officially opened by Queen Elizabeth II. To celebrate, a Concorde flew in the sky alongside the famous Red Arrows, which are the Royal Air Force's special flying team. They flew over the Parliament building while soldiers fired a 21-gun salute. It was a proud and powerful moment in British history. Flying on Concorde was not just fast, it was magical. This amazing plane could travel faster than the Earth's rotation, that meant a passenger could leave London after breakfast and arrive in New York before breakfast time there, on the same day. Famous broadcaster Sir David Frost once said that Concorde was the only way you can in human life be in two places at once. Since Concorde began flying passengers in 1976, over 2.5 million people experienced its supersonic speed. Every person who flew on Concorde received a special certificate that showed they had broken the sound barrier. This meant they had flown faster than the speed of sound, something most people could only dream of. Inside the plane, passengers could see a Mach meter on the wall near the front. This special meter didn't show speed in miles per hour like regular planes. Instead, it showed Mach numbers. Mach 1 meant the plane was flying at the exact speed of sound. Mach 2 meant it was flying twice as fast. Seeing that number go up made the experience feel like a real adventure. A typical journey from London to New York took under three and a half hours, compared to the usual seven to eight hours on a regular plane. 
The Concorde cruised at an altitude of 18,000 meters, nearly double that of standard aircraft. At this height, passengers could see the curve of the Earth, and the thinner air reduced drag, allowing the plane to go even faster. The Concorde experience wasn't just about speed, it was also about luxury. Passengers were treated like kings and queens. They sipped cocktails and champagne while flying through the sky. Their meals included fancy treats like caviar and lobster, and some even enjoyed fine cigars. Actual royalty flew on Concorde too. Queen Elizabeth II always sat in seat 1A when she was on board. Flying Concorde was not cheap. In 2003, a return ticket from London to New York cost 6,636 euros. But passengers weren't just paying for a seat, they were paying for time, style, and the feeling of being part of the future. Concorde made flying exciting and glamorous. To show how much people didn't mind paying for comfort and time, between 1976 and 2003, British Airways Concorde planes completed nearly 50,000 flights. They flew for over 140,000 hours and covered 140 million miles. That's more than traveling around the world 5,600 times. During those flights, over 1 million bottles of champagne were served to happy passengers. As much as the thought of being in two places at once sounds like a dream, this supersonic was not without its problems. The Concorde was far from perfect, and one of its major problems was fuel consumption. Its four powerful engines used a huge amount of fuel, making each flight very expensive to operate. On a normal flight, it used around 6,771 gallons of fuel, which is considered to be very expensive. In fact, it cost more to fly the plane than it made in profit. Only 20 Concords were ever built, and no airlines really wanted to buy them. The only ones that flew were used by Air France and British Airways, and they only did it because their governments ran them at the time. But fuel costs were not the only problem with the Concorde. Flying at twice the speed of sound brought more trouble than was initially anticipated. Because the Concorde was so fast, it created something called a sonic boom, a loud, powerful shock wave that could break windows and shake houses. <laughs> That meant it wasn't allowed to fly over cities and towns. It could only fly over the ocean, which limited where it could go. And even when it flew near cities, the Concorde was noisy. People living nearby often complained about the loud takeoffs and landings. On top of that, the plane released a lot of pollution and the growing environmental movement strongly opposed it. What was once a symbol of luxury and speed started to be seen as noisy, polluting, and wasteful. Because of all these problems, Concorde could only fly a few special routes, mainly between New York, Washington, London, and Paris. It couldn't travel as freely as regular airplanes. Sadly, the Concorde dream came to a tragic end after a terrible accident that took lives. On 25 July 2000, an Air France Concorde crashed just after taking off from Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. The crash killed 100 passengers, nine crew members, and four people on the ground. After the crash, all Concorde planes from both Air France and British Airways were grounded. But before that happened, the British plane Alpha Alpha flew one last time from JFK Airport in New York to Heathrow in London on the 12th of August, 2000. There were attempts to restore the reputation that had been damaged. In 2001, Concorde returned to the skies after a 17 million euros upgrade. However, Alpha Alpha was not chosen to fly again. Then came another big blow, the 11th of September terrorist attacks in the United States. After that, people flew less and many flights were empty. Concorde was expensive to run and empty seats meant big losses. By 2003, it was clear that Concorde had reached the end of its journey. Even though it no longer flies, the memories of Concorde still live on. It wasn't just a plane, it was a symbol of speed power and elegance. For many, flying on Concorde was one of the greatest experiences of their lives. The British Airways eventually announced it would retire its seven Concorde aircraft. This marked the end of a legendary era in air travel. To say goodbye in style, a farewell tour was planned across the UK and North America. Crowds of fans gathered to watch the sleek, supersonic jets take their final flights, cheering and waving as they passed overhead. After retirement, the Concords were placed in museums around the world. One special plane, 
G Bravo Oscar Alpha Alpha found its new home at the National Museum of Flight in East Fortune, Scotland. Now people from all over can visit and admire the elegant aircraft that once flew faster than sound. Though Concorde no longer takes to the skies, it remains a proud symbol of speed, innovation, and international teamwork, remembered fondly by fans and travelers everywhere. But while the world thought it was a final goodbye to supersonic commercial air travels, aviation companies had other plans. In recent years, there has been a strong comeback in the race to build super and hypersonic jets. Among the most exciting developments are Boom Supersonics aircraft, the XB-1 and the Overture. These advanced planes aim to bring back the thrill of high-speed air travel, much like the legendary Concorde once did. It is also determined to revive that golden age of flight with even better and more efficient designs. Boom Supersonics test aircraft, the XB-1, nicknamed the Baby Boom, is a small demonstrator plane built to test advanced supersonic technology. It's a third the size of their planned commercial airliner, the Overture. The XB-1 is powered by three General Electric J85 engines and is designed to fly at Mach 2.2, which is over twice the speed of sound, with a range of over 1,000 nautical miles. This sleek test jet features cutting-edge technologies, including carbon fiber composites, advanced aerodynamics, digitally optimized flight controls, and a special augmented reality vision system that helps pilots with takeoff and landing. The XB-1 is built using advanced carbon composite materials, which give the fuselage both strength and lightness. These materials are essential for handling the extreme stress and heat generated at high speeds. At the same time, they help keep the aircraft's weight low, which improves fuel efficiency, something the original Concorde struggled with. By solving weight and fuel challenges, Boom is working toward a more sustainable model of supersonic travel. Boom has also promised that both the XB-1 and the future Overture jet will operate as carbon neutral aircraft. They aim to use sustainable aviation fuels and energy efficient technologies to lower carbon emissions. This aligns with the global push for greener and cleaner air travel, something the aviation industry is focusing on more than ever before. Aerodynamics is another area where Boom is making big changes. The XB-1 features a long, sleek nose and delta-shaped wings, which reduce drag and optimize flight at supersonic speeds. These design elements also help to minimize shockwaves, which are responsible for the loud sonic booms that limited Concorde's routes in the past. With better aerodynamics, Boom hopes to soften these booms and make overland supersonic flight more acceptable. The XB-1 was officially revealed in October 2020. Since then, Boom has been conducting a series of test flights to ensure the aircraft's safety and performance. By October 2024, the fifth test flight successfully used the Flutter Excitation System for the first time. Flutter, in aviation terms, is the unsteady movement of aircraft parts caused by forces like lift, drag, and thrust. It's like a bird flapping its wings in flight. Testing for flutter is critical to ensure the aircraft remains stable and safe in turbulent conditions during commercial operations. Boom Supersonic reached a major milestone when its chief test pilot, Tristan Geppetto Brandenburg, broke the sound barrier three times during a special flight. It was the first time a civilian aircraft had ever gone faster than the speed of sound over the mainland United States. This marked a huge moment in aviation history and showed how far supersonic travel had come since the days of the Concorde. The company repeated this impressive achievement during another test flight on Monday. The flight lasted around 41 minutes, from liftoff to landing back at the Mojave Air and Space Port in California. It was another step forward for Boom as they continued to develop their new supersonic passenger jet, called the XB-1. During a live broadcast on the day of the flight, Boom's chief flight test engineer, Nick Shiraika said the team had achieved something many believed was impossible. He explained that most people thought a small startup company couldn't design and fly a supersonic aircraft without support from the government or large airplane manufacturers. However, Boom had managed to do it on their own. Sherika also pointed out that the company had now proven their ability not just once, but six times. According to him, Boom had shown the world that they could safely design, build, and test a plane that flies faster than sound. This success, he said, 
proved that innovation and determination could make the impossible possible, even without big industry support. What makes Boom's approach different is that they are privately funded, unlike previous supersonic projects like the Concorde, which relied heavily on government support. This shift represents a bold new chapter in aviation, where private innovation is taking the lead. This aircraft is essentially a flying laboratory designed to test technologies that will be used in Boom's full-scale passenger jet, the Overture. This commercial supersonic jet is designed to carry between 65 and 88 passengers. With lessons learned from the XB-1, Boom is aiming to create a fast, fuel-efficient, and environmentally friendly passenger plane that can cut travel times dramatically. If successful, it could mark a new age of sustainable, high-speed flight. The Overture is set to change the future of air travel. Designed to fly at speeds of Mach 1.7 or around 1,300 miles per hour, it could cut flight times nearly in half on long routes. For example, trips from New York to London could take just 3.5 hours, while a flight from Los Angeles to Sydney may be completed in only eight hours. With a projected range of about 4,250 nautical miles, Overture is designed for non-stop flights between major international cities, offering both speed and convenience. Like the XB-1 demonstrator, the Overture will be a carbon-neutral aircraft. Boom is making environmental sustainability a top priority, focusing on using sustainable aviation fuel and energy-efficient systems. Key features like its delta wing design, lightweight carbon composite construction, and advanced propulsion systems all help reduce drag and improve fuel efficiency, solving the major issues that plague the Concorde. Noise is another major challenge. To reduce the disruptive sonic boom, Boom plans for the Overture to fly at supersonic speeds only over oceans and large bodies of water, switching to subsonic speeds over land. This thoughtful approach could make supersonic travel more acceptable worldwide and help it gain approval from aviation authorities. The Overture is expected to begin commercial service in the early 2030s, with development and testing continuing throughout the 2020s. Excitement is building in the aviation world, especially after United Airlines became the first major carrier to order 15 Overture jets, with options for 35 more. This shows growing confidence in Boom's mission to bring back fast, efficient travel. While speed is a major feature, Boom is also focusing on comfort and luxury. Overture will offer a premium experience with large windows for each passenger, more spacious seating, and modern amenities. Unlike the cramped interiors of Concorde, Boom's Overture aims to provide a quieter and more relaxing cabin, enhanced with the latest technology for a better flying experience. They also want to address the huge cost that Concorde passengers faced Boom has stated that they are targeting business class pricing for Overture tickets, making it more accessible. The goal is to make supersonic travel a feasible option for more business and leisure travelers. Although Boom hasn't needed government backing for development, it has secured backing from multiple governments and institutions to explore potential military applications for the Overture platform. This includes the U.S. Air Force. Boom Supersonic aims to make high-speed travel more affordable than Concorde ever was. Instead of sky-high ticket prices, Boom plans to offer Overture flights at business class rates, making supersonic travel more accessible to both business and leisure travelers. While the company hasn't relied on government funding for its development, it has received support from various governments and organizations. Notably, the United States Air Force is working with Boom to explore potential military uses for the Overture platform. This partnership could expand the jet's role beyond commercial aviation into national defense and high-speed military transport. With each test, Boom was getting closer to launching a new generation of passenger flights that could cut travel time in half. The team remained confident that their work would one day change how people travel across the world. Thanks for watching. Before you go, click the link on your screen to check out another video. See you there.